Hey everybody and welcome back to What the Hell Happened to Them. A title fight is brewing. That's right, this season. Eddie Murphy versus Jim Carrey. I am your host, Patrick Scahill, and joining me on the line is a man wearing a thong made of licorice, Joe Veckman. Hi, it's me. <laughs> And on the audio boards is Love Van Rensselaer reminding me to remind you that you can email the cast at whathappentothemcast at gmail.com. And our sponsor this week is Send It Like Beckham. Tired of the post office or UPS being unreliable, losing your packages in the mail? Well, score a goal by Sending It Like Beckham, the new delivery service, fresh out of England. All right, Joe, what movie are we doing this week? We watched Eddie Murphy in 1996's The Night Professor. Coming out uh, two weeks after The Cable Guy. That's true. Which did better? You already want to know? Hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, what happens in the movie? Well, it's rude, professor? but I'll tell you. Grossly overweight, yet good-hearted professor Sherman Klump takes a special chemical that turns him into the slim but obnoxious buddy love. Does grossly have a, a negative connotation? Yes. But I think we need to point Gross out the fact is that... Gross is a negative word. I think we need to point out the fact that the man is severely obese and is very unhealthy and uh, could expand his lifespan significantly by losing some weight. Yes. Which he does resolve to do by the end of the movie. He does it at the beginning of the movie, too. Well, he, he gives that up really quickly. Well, he's kind of, like, you know, hurt by the trampoline just kind of collapsing as soon as he steps <laughs> on it. But at the end, he's like, I'm going to be more serious and be dedicated to do it. And here we go. Oh, you try the, 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 the voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, so we, just, we just want you to be healthy, Mr. Clump, Sherman Clump. Yeah. We, we want you to have a nice life with Miss Purdy. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't want you to, to be dead in 20 years of a cardiac situation. Yeah, I never think it'll give me that long. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, what, okay. Yes. How did this do the cable guy? You don't know yet? Well, okay. Yeah, no, I can tell you. You just want to know? Fine, we don't have to talk. We'll, we'll get to that I mean, later. I kicked the cable guy's ass. <laughs> well, obviously that week, but like overall, like which did better? Do you know? Overall. Well, I'll remind you, the cable guy was made for 47 million. 20 of that went to Jim. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it made 102.8 million. Well, this movie was made for 54 million. A little more. Made 274 million. Hmm. All right, he's going to be feeling pretty good then. He's like, haha, sucker. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jim's like, all right, whatever. I got 20 million. What'd you get for this? And he's like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. 19 million, you yeah. bastard. <laughs> but he got 19 million and he was also playing uh, several roles that he probably got 19 million for as well. Yeah. <laughs> Jim only had to do the one loser. Loser. Then he professor so successful because everybody's like, wow, we really love Jerry Lewis. Let's go check this one out. It's a loose remake. <laughs> I saw I saw the Nutty Professor. Oh. For for this podcast. Wow. Yeah. You you dog. I can't believe you. Dirty dog. I was it takes a while for it to do the the Eddie Murphy Nutty Professor thing, and I'm like, are we just doing something else? Like it Jerry Lewis is on with like his Professor Frank voice from The Simpsons and uh-huh. And uh, just being silly in those long moments of silences. And I go, is this a joke? Did the movie just forget it was going still? What are we? And uh, But yes, then he he doesn't want to be not fat. He wants to be like not nerdy because he's a big, you know, flavin nerd. <laughs> and and then he becomes like dapper Rat Pack Sinatra type. Does he pull it off? Yeah, I mean... I've only seen the poster, and he looks really nerdy, so it's hard to think that he can pull it off. Yeah, they, you know, he's they put, like, big teeth in him, and he's, like, yeah, got yeah, a yeah. haunch thing, and the glasses, you know, it's... Oh, it's a real Superman glow-up. Yes, it's yeah. like, you know, a, a woman in the 90s nerd that has to be prom queen. They just take off the glasses. They just, oh, like, s- smooth yes. out the hair. M. Night Shyamalan's, uh... What is it? What's that fucking movie? God... He did the script for it. Um, signs. Not signs. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is that one with the... Uh, oh, jeez. Wow. Brain broken. Exhaustion, perhaps? I've never heard of that movie. She's all that? Oh, I thought, that you would, thought there was a movie called Exhaustion. No, I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. I don't She's sleep anymore. Yes. Screenplay in <laughs> the year of the, uh, the Sixth Sense... M. Night Shyamalan made in January. He put out a script. 
with his friend R. Lee Fleming Jr. Don't know if it's his friend, but it could be. Uh, they they wrote together. She's all that in that movie. Rachel Lee Cook takes off glasses and then she's pretty. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> but the the advantage is Jerry Lewis is like overdoing the nerd thing. So he gets to just like he just does like a S- Sinatra type voice and he's like, hey, yo, doll face. What do you want to do? And he plays on the piano, which is maybe where Eddie Murphy gets the idea to throw a dude in the piano. It's the 60s. Right. So they're at like some hip, cool music club thing. Yeah. You know, it's a good, you know, Eddie Murphy going to a comedy club, the, the, the scream version of it. The scream. The same year as Scream. <laughs> anyway, I didn't like the Jerry Lewis movie much. Yeah, why? I kind of like this, but I like I just thought it was so gross most of the time. Are you not a fan of the farts? I know. I did not like any of that. Is that like that. the spitting for you? Is this, yeah, maybe it's like the spitting and they're just and he's pooping in his pants and I There's just, a lot like, of farting in this. I just don't want any of this, and I know the sequel's called The Clumps, and I'm like, I want less of that. Oh, you're going to get so much more. <laughs> the yellow caution tape on the DVD. But I... So many farts, you can't, you, can't, you can't get enough. I liked Eddie's two main characters. I liked this Sherman performance he was doing. Yeah. Like, I liked the voice and the personality, and I thought he was, like, really in that character. Absolutely. You know, for as much as the script allows. It's not... It's not an Academy Award winning role or anything. Well, and then I liked, I liked that cu- that side of Eddie just really up playing an aspect of him we've seen in other films for the buddy love role, and then like having having them fight between the two of them at the end. Like I liked that dynamic. Yeah, I liked this. Face. Yeah, this Wolfman kind of subtext uh-huh. to it too, the Jekyll and Hyde sort of thing. Like fun I, I, effects with his lips. And where it's like the lip gets really big. Yeah, early, early CGI stuff happening here. It looks like Flubber. Uh, another Jerry Lewis movie, Flubber. Oh, Robin Williams. I guess, yeah, was Jerry Lewis just big in the... Because we're doing Dr. Doolittle soon, and that's also Jerry Lewis. Was Jerry wow. Lewis just like it was a retrospective happening in the 90s? <laughs> or it was like, Eddie, you're the new Jerry Lewis. Well, you brought up this is not an Academy Award uh, role for Eddie. But some special effects at the 54th Golden Globe Awards, he was nominated now, for best go, actor. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Don't you and at the 69th me. Academy Awards, it won best makeup. Okay, well, that's fine. That's that's a real award. It is a real award. That's a good award. Best makeup. That that's I got no beef with that. Well, do you know who also didn't have a beef with this movie? A big beef. Roger Ebert. Can you put some fart sound effects in there, please? Just <laughs> no. load this movie. Load no, this podcast up with, with fart sound effects. Jeez. <laughs> Whenever there's like some dead air, just like the little 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 beefer, like Sandler would do. <laughs> just a little beefer. Uh, uh, who who didn't who didn't have beef with the movie? Who didn't? Roger, Roger, Roger. Roger, 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 Roger. Roger Ebert didn't because he gave this movie three out of four stars. Calling it a movie that's like a thumb to the nose for everyone who said Murphy had lost it. That's us. (laughs) (laughs) What happened before this was the vampire thing. Vampire in Brooklyn. Yeah, that was that was brutal. And then there was the magazine, fashion magazine one and the con artist one. Fashion magazine one. What are you talking about? He's working at. Was it a fashion magazine? Yeah. No, he was in. He was in the, the the uh. The government, remember? No, no, I remember that one. But what's the one where he's at like the, he's at, he's like a high up executive in something and he Holy meets the shit. woman running the orphanage. Wasn't that at a fashion magazine? <sighs> what are you talking about? I don't. <laughs> what is this movie? Like he's like. Beverly Hills Cop the, 3 was the one no. before Vampire in Brooklyn. Okay, but like then what, like what's that movie? <laughs> like he's, he's me- dating the woman, but then the woman's mean to him. But he like he, he he likes her feet or whatever. Excuse me. Remember, like he's he, like he's looking for the perfect woman and he finds her, but she's like really mean and hostile. But then he meets the other woman that he doesn't find perfect. Oh, but he loves are you her. talking about boomerang? Boomerang. Yeah, boomerang. There we go. That was a long time ago. When did we re- record that? July twenty third. I was in a really weird place. <laughs> yes, I know. There's a lot of, lot of gym in between all this Eddie stuff. Okay. Yes, yes. Eddie had a, Eddie had not having a great '90s, we'll say. 
No, not at all. But, my friend, I'll give you a little sneak peek. A little sneak peek for you. Yeah. I rank this as number two on my Eddie list. Wow. I don't I know. I love this movie. It's great. <laughs> it, it went up a few stars for me. Very, as in one. I, just... <laughs> so much clumping like i'm impressed that eddie's doing all of those characters at the table except for obviously the little boy i'm glad he didn't try to pull that off <laughs> you know what maybe he should have <laughs> who's stopping him i just i couldn't ah <clears throat> uh, couldn't do it like it really just not my vibe this gross out comedy thing it's not my he clearly has shifted right his his yeah. strategy is now Closer to the family comedy, would you say? Uh, absolutely. This is PG thirteen. He's not making R movies. Like this is this is now his version of raunchy. Like he doesn't get to curse or do the sex things as much anymore. So it's just like farting and pooping. It's funny. <laughs> it's good. I can't do it. I can't. It's so great. I, I want to do the the Sherman character. I do find charming. I just I can't. I that that's a big holdback. The entire comedic premise of the film i i i cannot sanction that buffoonery did you know yeah that eddie murphy also played the richard simmons parody lance perkins no that's crazy he did is he really? in whiteface right <laughs> isn't that great yeah they're taking it back it's great i love it no i was i actually had to look that up I'm like wait is that eddie in there because that is that is disappearing into that role. Yeah, it's like when he was that old Jewish man in yep. the coming to well, America, places. maybe. No. Trading places. I don't remember. One which, of them. Well, they, yeah. They're kind of interchangeable for me. I can't really tell which one. Definitely one of them. Yeah. The person I don't like in this movie is Larry Miller, who played the Dean. Oh, yeah. I've seen him. And he was a, a staple of 90s sitcoms. Yeah. He just kind of drove me nuts. He was kind of annoying. He's a bigger role than the the Jerry Lewis version of it. Like he, he is a consistent thing. It was seemed it seemed no worse or better than anything else in the movie. He's definitely in the sequel. And I yes, I remember that. Unfortunately, I remember why. I yeah, I remember why too. <laughs> Let me tell you. Did you see some credits on this movie, my friend? My friend, did you see the credits on the screenplay? No, I didn't see that. Well, we got a David Sheffield. We got a Barry W. Blaustein. We got a Tom Shadiak. And we got one Steve Odekark. He's back, baby. Now he's working with Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I say yeah, that for and you. And he's like, oh, Jim, you, you think you're so hot being the highest paid director? I'm taking your boy. He's mine he's now. He's taking his boy. <laughs> taking your boy. How do you like that? <laughs> that? That is Jim. That's Jim's guy. I'd like to think Eddie and Jim just have, like, no ill will towards each other and don't really think much about each other, and we're making a big beef out of this, and they're just living their own lives in the 90s. I don't know. Eddie's probably like, hey, I was very successful in the 80s when Jim Carrey was a nobody making Copper Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one he always cites. <laughs> uh, Dave Chappelle playing a, a stand-up comic to just kind of get... Beat up by Eddie. Yeah, I enjoyed St Dave Chappelle in this. Uh, he's got some. He's got some funny one-liners in here. Yeah, put it, they put some big teeth in him too. Maybe he's like a throwback to the Jerry Lo Lo Lewis version. Perhaps that makes sense. Oh no, because they have to make fun of his teeth anyway. Yeah, but why not? Why not? It seems like a. a like if you're a picking reference. something to make fun of, yeah, teeth. It's like ah. Anyway. Does Eddie do this? Be like in the original movie, right? Jerry Lewis obviously playing a professor version of himself and a dapper version of himself. He also plays like a baby version of himself for this Ooh. weird flashback thing. So that it, no, so then Eddie should have played the little kid. <laughs> Were producers being like Eddie? Let's do this movie. You know, we know you like play multiple characters. Jerry Lewis played multiple characters. Let's go with it. Come on. Like, is that, that might have been the germination behind wanting to cast someone like Eddie in this? That's, that's, uh, I like that thinking. Yeah. Let me finish up Ebert's review for you. Oh, of course. Yes, sorry. Roger, Roger, Roger. Roger, 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 Roger. He's very good, and the movie succeeds in two different ways. It's sweet and good-hearted, and then again, it's raucous and slapstick and bathroom humor. I liked both parts. I do not like the bathroom humor. I don't like it. It's no different than when... For me, it's no different than the... Hap, like, 
shitting all over a bathroom, you know? Like, I, I just don't Hap. like that. <laughs> I just don't like that stuff. Oh, yeah, I don't I don't like seeing this shit, but it's just farts. Farts sound uh, funny. It's all in the same bag Don't they, me. Lev? <laughs> <laughs> Top it, Lev. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn us into the, that Heck podcast. Heck a lease, heck a lease. We're, we're not a morning zoo. You, what are we doing? Are, aren't we, love? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I, was 96 the year of the unnecessarily stylistic dream sequences in films? Oh, that was a fun dream sequence. Yeah, that one was at least better because it served as a call to oh, action. You don't, for yeah, the, you don't like the cable guy one, I remember. It's, yeah, it's, this one, it had a plot purpose, kind of. It like was the thing that made him be like, oh, shit, I got to find a way to do this now. And then he does the <laughs> potion stuff. So like, okay, fine. But I still was, I don't know. It's just another special effects hullabaloo. Let me tell you something, though. Yeah. This Tom Shadyak... Yeah. He knows the tight 90 very well. <laughs> this guy is... I mean, come on. Can't really argue with it. I mean, there's not, you know, all that much to do. This movie overall, better than the Jerry Lewis one. Even the climax is like, there's a threat of like, oh no, they're going to get rid of Sherman forever, right? Like, there, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. real threat there. And the Jerry Lewis one, just like, everybody just finds out at some performance. <laughs> He's like, oh, whoops, I turned back. How awkward. Let me give you the whole story, Flavin. You know, like it's, what year was that made? Nineteen sixty-three, maybe. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, I just might not be a Jerry Lewis guy. I don't know. Mm, that's fine. <laughs> Perhaps it's just uh, the era it was made. I don't know. But uh, very slow, very boring. <laughs> it's just nice to see our friend Steve Odekirk get some more work. Thought it'd be like an Alan Cover situation. He's just like riding on to Carrie's coattails the whole time for dear life. <laughs> So, let me see if I can find anything for you. Oh, it took approximately three hours each day to apply Eddie Murphy's makeup. For for any of the roles? For probably, yeah. I just, it doesn't seem like you're getting much done, right? Like, you, you can really only do one role a day. Are you just trying to, like, jump from set to set with him in that role as best you can? I... Uh, it's gotta be right like, yeah. I don't know I, how the, do you yeah, the make end that credits work? you kind of see it like the makeup like shine through a little bit because he's like whipping off the wig as the yeah. old the old lady <laughs> Eddie Murphy handed Jerry Lewis the Gene Herschelt humanitarian Oscar he said before handing it to him from one and nutty professor to another there you go mm-hmm. uh, Jerry Lewis was actually set to make a cameo but pulled out after expressing dissatisfaction at the amount of <laughs> fart jokes in the script <laughs> You got you and Jerry Lewis have something in common then. Well, Jerry Lewis is just jealous because Eddie Murphy's movie actually has jokes in it. Wow! This is first the first Eddie Mur- Eddie Murphy movie of the '90s to reach over 100 million dollars at the box office. Damn! Not not at a good 90. Not at a good 90. Uh, the studio initially objected to having Eddie Murphy portray all the adult clumps since hiring four additional actors would be much cheaper than the additional filming days required for Murphy to undergo multiple costume and makeup changes. Murphy devised a special screen test with makeup artist Rick Baker in which he portrayed Mama and Grandma Clump to convince the studio executives otherwise. Mama Clump is great. She's such a great creation. He really just like goes like headlong and like becomes a whole different person. <laughs> like, because there's kind of similarities with uh, the dad and the uncle or his like his brother or whatever. Yeah. But like Mama Clump and even even like the grandma one. But Mama Clump. So good. <laughs> I bet that's like Eddie Murphy's real mom. Perhaps. I could see why the studio wouldn't want to do that. But Jesus Christ. Like, I think if it were like 1990 and Eddie still were like high flying i think they wouldn't have had any problem doing it of but course now you're like we don't want to spend that much more on you we don't we saw that vampire thing we don't know yeah eddie murphy originally wanted john landis to direct bad idea i thought they didn't like each other you didn't like him after the last time why do you want to bring him back i don't understand that was the old drama of that that second time you guys were together why bring him third back? third time right they did a bunch of movies together I, I just one of the time, well, the last time he brought him back because because that guy had just had you know the trial thing, so things weren't going so well, and Eddie wanted to throw him a bo- yeah, Eddie wanted to throw him a bone, yeah, but the guy kept treating Eddie like he was not a superstar, so Eddie was all pissed off about that. So Eddie, why are you bringing him back? I don't why 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 well, was didn't. that the goal? I know, but like he wanted to, but why? 
you you've talked about how much you didn't like that last experience with him. You're going to do it again? <laughs> I don't know. This the lead was originally written for Rick Moranis. He turned it down to spend time with his kids. I I mean, I guess I've never seen Rick Moranis do something like Buddy Love, so I have a hard time believing he could. I really don't think it would have been Buddy Love. Uh, was considered by critics to be Eddie Murphy's big comeback movie, as most of his movies in the 90s up until this had flopped at the box office. Many critics felt Murphy's career at that point may not have ever revived, but the movie was such a huge hit critically and commercially and completely revived his career and followed up with a handful of box office hits. We'll see. Yeah, this is like... Eddie's other films weren't doing well, and we could argue why they might not have been. Mm. But to some degree, he's like, for whatever reason, I need to reinvent myself now, because what I'm doing is not working. But he's also at the age where he needs to reinvent himself, because he's in a different spot in his life now. He's not some young hotshot having fun and, you know, partying too late before a shoot day. He's like dad now, you know? Well, like he needs. hold up. Yeah. When he's buddy love... He's really sexy. Okay, he's I'm like obnoxious, about- but he's like sexy, Eddie. Yeah, do you think I could pull off like some of his suits? I kind of like his suits. Absolutely, that'd be sweet. Definitely do it. All right. Anyway, so now he's like dad guy. <laughs> like the types of movies and roles he needs to do. Yes, is gonna change. Like Sandler's roles start changing too when he he becomes dad. So. And Sandler himself has had, like, different phases of his careers as well. well. For one reason or another, he was bound to start doing these movies anyway. It's just good that it happened when his other era was petering out already. The 90s obviously wants different things from their comedies than the 80s anyway. It, it kind of worked out for him, I guess. Yeah. Whether it was planned or not. I have some more uh, could-have, would-have-beens for you. Okay. John Goodman. <laughs> okay. Rude. I, d- I don't know how you defat him. Rude. Is- <laughs> Have you seen him lately on the Connors? Okay, but like it, that Tell is him to stop 30, drinking. That is 30 years later. <laughs> he's, he's like, I can't lose weight. They need me fat on Roseanne. It's not <laughs> funny if I'm not fat. That's rude. <laughs> um, he's like, I'm not going to get those Flintstone jobs if I'm not fat. Uh, he already did the Flintstones. He was already out. Tim Allen. Okay, I see that. Uh huh. Ernie Sabella. I don't know who that I is. I don't know who yet. Nope. Uh, I'm going to look up who that is. 90s relic. Oh, he voiced Pumbaa, the warthog, in The Lion King. Looks like this guy is not really a lead actor, though. So I don't know no, how you're going to put him in your movie. <laughs> that came and went real quick, I see. He's literally famous for being Pumbaa. That's about <laughs> it. 90% of his jobs are playing Pumbaa. Okay. Weird that he was up for that role. Or was even considered Dave Foley. Oh, okay. And John Hurd. He's the dad in Home Alone. Mm, that's boring. It's just a weird choice. I think if you go Dave Foley, you're going the Jerry Lewis route, where he's just a nerd. Yeah. Like, I don't think I don't think you're putting him in a fat suit. You know, what Puma would guy. Maybe John you do that. Could I can't. This is an Eddie Murphy movie only. Well, I think it's damning, too, that when I type in The Nutty Professor, the Jerry Lewis movie is really hard to find because it's like, do you mean The Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps? And I go, no. Although you just want regular Nutty Professor. No, I want the, I want the old one. I got to type in <laughs> Nutty Professor and then Jerry, and then finally that version comes up. I think this is everybody's idea of The Nutty Professor now. Good. It's a good movie. <laughs> The Dave Foley one could work, but you're doing a different kind of movie. The script almost feels written for Eddie, or maybe Eddie came in and, like, did his makeover with it. I think Steve Odekirk was like, let's get Eddie Murphy. I've worked with Jim enough. (laughs) He doesn't want to do Ace Ventura 3, so I got to find something else. Yeah, he's like, I'm out. I'm done. I can't deal with Jim anymore. He's too much of a a prima donna on set. Little did we know. Oh, yeah, yeah. those will come up soon, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. It's right around the corner. Eddie, Eddie's had his time and he's learned it. He, he went through his in the 80s. Now it's Jim's turn. Yeah, he's got a rebrand going. All right. You want to talk about how, how lazy can we score this movie? Meh. Oh, tell me. Well, we have our composer. Our composer is David Newman. Oh. Let's talk about some movies he's done. His first one was a short film for Tim Burton called Frank and Weenie. Oh, I know that one. He then does a kind of a creature feature B movie, Critters. It's like his oh. first real movie. Sure. Bunch of movies i never heard of. And then we get to uh, The Brave Little Toaster. Oh, not bad. 
Then he begins what seems to be a long partnership with Danny DeVito with Throw Mama from the Train. Okay. A movie I think you said you liked. Yeah, I think I liked it. No, not that movie. This movie, Heathers. Oh, I love Heathers. I just recently watched that. Good movie. He seems to do all the uh, Bill and Ted movies. Sure. War of the Roses, another DeVito flick. Good. Uh, let's see. Oh, Duck Tales. Does the Duck Tales movie. Oh, good movie. Meet the Applegates. Don't think the Christina is involved in that. No, poor Christina. Another Bill and Ted. Oh, Rover Dangerfield. Ah! This one caught my eye. I go, oh, he's doing another short film? He's just been doing so many features. Why would he do this short film? The short film called... Itsy Bitsy Spider. What? <laughs> <laughs> we got a crossover. Hell yeah. Uh, the Mighty Ducks. Everyone's just cross-pollinating right now. They're all just like fucking and it's like, let's make some comedy, baby. Here's a DeVito cross-pollination. Hoffa. Wow. The Sandlock, Coneheads. Uh, not up in the air, but the air up there. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. I've seen some of these movies, and quite recently some of them. I don't remember a single score from any of these movies. <laughs> yeah, the Flintstones. Yeah. Oh, here's another here's another cross pollination. Boys on the side. Hell yeah. Movie you like, Tommy Boy. Excellent movie. Then that gets us to here's three films in nineteen ninety six he does. The Nutty Professor, Matilda, Danny DeVito, and Jingle All the Way. Whew, that is Quite the trifecta. <laughs> We're going to see him again for Eddie in a couple years with Bowfinger. Oh. Okay. Uh, of course, they had to bring him back for the Nutty Professor 2, the clumps. Yeah. Just going to redo his score. And then they, they said, we hate this guy from Dr. Doolittle. We're doing Dr. Doolittle 2 with Mr. Newman. Wow. Then more DeVito with Death to Smoochie, Duplex. That's the end of DeVito. <laughs> he does that Joss Whedon film, Serenity. Up oh, Norbit. Like he, oh, he's back. He must be a friend of Eddie's. Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Squeakwell, a movie I did for Grant and Dimitri's podcast that they're never going to release. Psychotic behavior. <laughs> <laughs> then he slows down in the 2010s, and he's only had one movie in 2020, and is a movie you've seen. Uh huh. The movie is. Uh huh. West Side Story. No. <laughs> I don't believe you. Yes, indeed. I'm looking this up. I don't believe you. So he's done a lot of famous films here. We've obviously covered a few of them. None of those scores struck me as particularly lazy. I don't know why this one, like uh, why I'm just singling this one out in particular, but I listened to it. it felt very Mickey Mousey. I did not much care for it. It annoyed me in some spots. Maybe they just didn't give him a lot of time to ex- compose it. I-, I don't know. Maybe the special effects took a long time. I-, I-, I couldn't say. John Williams suggested composer David Newman. Big Clumps fan. <laughs> Fart? The inmates are running the asylum now. <laughs> This is, this is so, it's such a stupid episode we're doing. <laughs> Lev. Fart? <laughs> Good stuff. I hate it. All right. How can you hate it? I hate it. You got last looks on farts? this. I hate it. This is how much I hate it. You got last looks. Last looks? Um, Eddie, great to see you back in shape fart <laughs> all right all right all right, all right. <laughs> you got last looks i says, why is eddie murphy do this movie well I've, I've posited some ideas why he would want to pick a project like this i've also posited some ideas why he'd want to reinvent himself his career obviously isn't working uh I, I don't know he gets to do his character work again like he gets to play seven different characters which he seemed to have to fight for like he really wanted to do it for whatever reason and the comeback seemed to pay off. Maybe he always says he wanted to make movies his kids could see. Like, this is kind of the beginning of that, though I wouldn't show it to my kids because I don't want them to <laughs> laugh at farts. But maybe that's an unavoidable at a certain age, right? Like, farts are just funny. Farts are always funny. That's no, no. That laugh. So, uh, <laughs> a symphony of farts. This is what our theater teacher taught us back in high school. Farts are always funny. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. The non, the non-stop shenanigan buffoonery! Not sanctionable! 
Okay. That's it. All right. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, our sponsors. Send it like Beckham. Go for the goal! With Send it like Beckham. Make sure your package gets there on time. And uh, let Van Rensselaer for minding those Audi boards and being a pain in my ass today. <coughs> oh, yep. I walked into that one saying the word ass. <coughs> yep. I said it again. All right, Joe. Uh, okay. All right, now Joe's doing it too. All right. Yeah, we're all having fun. <laughs> Alright, uh, okay, no thanks for Joe, no thanks for Lev, I'm your host, Patrick Scaling, you can find my featured documentary, short films, video, essays, animation, behind the scenes, footage, and so much more, at looksoniconited.com, social media, presumably with a similar line name. Thank you all for listening, Joe, say goodnight! <laughs>
the day before I went to the Godzilla pop-up shop in Los Angeles. And here's what here's what I'll tell you. I don't think I like pop-up shops. Oh, yeah. I got to wait in like a line for like an hour cuz everybody wants to go to this thing that's there for like 2 weeks. And then I get there, I feel like overly compelled to buy something. You know, I kind of like the things here. Do I like them enough though? I don't know. They have some stuff flown in from Japan. They have oh, some wow. stuff exclusive to the pop-up shop. I get to take pictures of me with a bunch of Godzilla standy things. Nice. I'll send you those at some point. Please. And I ultimately did buy something, but I felt kind of gross doing it. Like mm. I capitalism. Like, yeah, like I I was like <laughs> pressured into it by just the fact that I had to wait an hour in line to get in and I'm like, Jeez. "Well, I'm not going to leave now." Yeah. You know, like that and the FOMO thing it was like, well, I, I got to do it now or I'm never going to do it. And I go and then I left and I was like, you used me, pop up store. Yeah. Never again will I fall for your shenanigans. And I like Godzilla, too. And I felt I felt like a, a, a whore leaving there. Jeez. Just a just a Godzilla whore leaving and, and used up and spit out by the pop up system. Never again, Joe. Wow. A little, a little sad at the end. Like, I just want, you know, maybe if I could be like, ah, I'm going to think this over, see what I really want, and then go back in two weeks, I could know I'd be happy with my purchase. Did not feel good. And then two people almost got in a fight in the line because one of them accidentally ripped another one's poster and, like, security had to come. I didn't realize (laughs) how how big a deal this was going to be. Okay. That was my Godzilla Day updates. A little sad. Sadder than I was expecting. Pop-up stores. I don't... I, 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 I... Thought I could get behind it, be a fun thing. Was not. Not fun. Hmm. Sad. I wish I could, like, browse ahead of time. They'd be like, here's what we're offering. And then I could look and be like, no, that's not worth waiting in line for. They should do that. There should be an app. That's there just, should be an app. This, you can scan the little QR thing. No, uh, no. And then they're like, here's what's inside while you wait. Make it go faster. Hmm. Yeah. What a concept. Because I spent $50, I did get... $50. <laughs> that's oh, not yeah, bad. I got it. Yeah, that's fine. Shirts are expensive now, Joe. It's really annoying. You only got one shirt for $50. No, no, no. I got some other, I got okay, other good. things. It's a little Christmas gift for people. But uh, oh. the, uh, you get, I got this really cool tote, Godzilla tote bag. I can now tote things around in this tote bag. That'll be cool. Got something okay out of the experience, despite feeling like a common household whore doing the thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do this. Do the show. Let me drink some water. Da, la, 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 la.